choose the right cable. Unpack the tool. There is a wire stripper for pass-through RJ45 connector and two blades. One is for replacing the crimping end, the other is for replacing the cutting end. The way to unlock the crimper is holding the arm, pushing up the lock button, releasing your hands, then the crimper will be unlocked. Put strain relief boot through the cable. Strip the jacket as 3 cm by stripper. Be careful not to damage the wire. In this step, what should be noticed is the length of stripped jacket should not be too long or too short. Arrange the 8 wires in T568B order and straighten them. Because if the wires are not straight enough, it will be hard to get them passed through the connector. Make a double check of the wires you just arranged if the sequence was right. Then oblique cut the wires for easily going through the connector. Put one side which has clipped down. And the first pin is on the far left, and you should check it again if the wire sequence is correct after they are passed through the connector. From left to right is the orange white, orange, green white, blue, blue white, green, brown white, brown. If something goes wrong, then you need to do it again. Insert the RJ45 plug into the cable cap. Put connector into the crimp interface. Wires can't be cut off if you don't put the connector to the bottom. Then start crimping. When finished crimping, you will find the three prong blade will be in good contact with wires and they will also go down a little. When one end down, then start to make the other end and you will get an ethernet cable. Use tester to test the cable if it can work. If it lights turn to green in order, then it means you make it. But if any one of the lights doesn't flash, then you need to check if the wire sequence is right or is there any other problem with the crimping. If something really goes wrong, then you need to remake it till it works. Question 1. 
why the connector cannot work. There are some common reasons. Reason one, you got a wrong wiring sequence. Second, is the connector has not been cleaned totally. The third reason is the Ethernet cable or the plug is faulty itself. Fourth one is the crimping tube is damaged itself. Question two: What will happen if wiring sequence goes wrong? It will be no signal. Question three: How do I know if my Ethernet cable matches with the connector? Please notice the AWG information on the cable, and remember to measure the insulation diameter of the wire. The most important thing is the AWG and the insulation diameter must be both meted. Question four: What's the difference between T568A and T568B standard? Here is the difference one. They have different wire sequence. The standard of T568A is green, white, green, orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange, brown, white, brown. And the standard of T568B is orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. And here is the difference too. Different purpose. T568A is used when network equipment needs to be cross-interconnected. The cross-interconnection means one end of the Ethernet cable connected with T568A and the other end of the cable connected with T568B, and this kind of connection is normally used for connections between two same devices, such as connection between computer and computer, hub and hub. Switch and switch. T568B is also used for direct interconnection, in addition to cross interconnection, which means both ends of the network cable are connected with T568B to connect two different devices, such as connection between computer and ADSL modem. AD SL modem and WAN port of ADSL router, computer and LAN port of ADSL router, computer and switch or hub. And here is the difference three: different compatibility. T568A is not backward compatible. T568B is backward compatible. Question five: What's the difference between two prong blade and three prong blade, and why is three prong blade better than two prong blade? The two prong or three prong is referred to the specification of the connector's copper that connects to the Ethernet cable. For three prong blade, the material and the contact performance are much better than two prong blade, so the network speed would also be faster. In addition, the contact area of three prong blade is much more than two prong blade, so the stringent resistance would be stronger too. In question six: What's the advantages and the disadvantages of having a Z-shaped and line-shaped aperture? Z-shaped connectors may apply for a wider diameter range, so for wires with a thinner diameter. The wires may produce shift after the copper blade was inserted, and for line-shaped connectors, applicable diameter range may not be that wide. But they do not need load bar when operating, so the installation process would be much easier.